One of the trickiest things I found with rotoscoping and compositing is getting rid of contaminated edge pixels so that I can then put a new background, like this guy, underneath something and not have any of the original edge pixel, you know, junk, which is what you can see we're doing right here. So that's the goal. I'm going to get rid of those green pixels that are in the, the edge of the, the bottom of the thumb that's reflecting light. And this is also great anytime there's like motion blur um, because it allows you to fake new pixels out to the edge to match the original edge uh, size. But then you could feather that out because you have complete control over it. If you look at it over here, now I have a completely rebuilt edge thumb that like see right here these green values completely gone in this new version okay so that's the goal um, the way I like to do that and uh, have figured a, a good technique out is using this tool called advanced edge extend it uses some of the clean play tool that's in fusion um, but there's actually quite a bit going on if you hover over there's all those operations that are happening but anyways the way the flow works and the whole setup is you start with your footage right on the left side and you make a mask okay the mask could be made here you know your roto mask could be made here I did it in Mocha Pro and just brought it in and you're gonna start by um, basically making two copies of the original footage so one copy of the footage is going to advance edge extend over here the other footage is gonna be a foreground layer that gets merged back together over here and that is the core mat okay so that way, all that inner detail is not going to be affected. So that's that's going to remain true in our final image. But all the stuff that's around the edge is going to be uh, faked with new pixels. And I'm going to show you how that works. So um, why don't we start with the Advanced Edge Extend tool loaded up over here. Now, by default, this tool is basically how I'm using it is by default, except I have noise turned on which we'll get to in a minute, you can kind of see there's noise. That's basically all we're going to be doing is those edge pixels. But you want to turn that noise on because that'll help blend things a lot more with the original footage. It's a really nice feature that was added to this tool. But under controls, if you choose final result, it basically gives you no alpha channel. If I come over here and hit A, uh, there's nothing there. So that's not super useful. Uh, when you need to have multiple layers in a composite. So I like to just use this. You can see final result is taking the background, which is this source piped in right there. We still need that piped in right here, the original source. But what I'm going to use this as is just the extension only piece because I'm going to do my own composite of these two. That's what this merges downstream in here. So this edge extend is going to be the background, the yellow background, to the foreground of my original core mat. So I'm going to basically I'm um, separating these two out so that I can just pull out the background edge pixels and then overlay the center core. Make sense? Now how do I know, how do I figure out, how do I create this, this extension right here? So everything I'm using in this tool is at default. I haven't changed anything. But what I am doing is my original roto shape here, you can see I've actually pulled in on it. Um, and the reason why is because if I look at my original thumb inside that roto shape, there's actually green pixels. See, see, it's basically so. What's happening when you use this tool, this advanced edge, edge tool, is you want to make sure that this is looking, this is looking at the edge pixels and pulling those out. So if those are green, this will be green. So what you generally will need to do is on your original polygon, you're going to use border width to suck in on it. But how much border width do you pull in? I'm going to reset this to zero. And you can see, by default, it's green. And that's because it's pulling in these green pixels here that were included on the very edge of that mask. Okay. Uh, we want to get rid of that green. We want to get rid of that spill. At the top, you can see the spill is actually just my the top of my thumbnail which is white but down here you can see it's super green so down here we would take border width we suck this in just pull it to the left until you get skin color is basically the idea or get rid of whatever the contaminated color is if you hold command on that thing command while you're dragging you can do it a little bit more finer in increments um, but there's no reason you can't be precise because this is all floating point uh, here in fusion so now we've got that green is totally removed okay 
So we should be in pretty good shape with this tool. So here's our advanced edge extend is on the left side. Our left side is going to be um, just the roto of the thumb. And this is a channel Boolean with the only thing that, that's going on here is the original image is piped in. Everything is left alone except in our settings. We have multiply by mask turned on and the mask is going in there. So it's the my favorite way of like adding a roto that's not, you know, pulling it <laughs> directly on the media end. So we've got these two elements, the advanced edge extent on the left side and the uh, the channel Boolean, which is basically just our pulled in roto mask. And we have to combine these two. Right. So this is going to go. The left side is going to go on top. The, the right side is going to go on bottom. You do that with a simple merge node, which is this guy right here. And before I do that, I'm going to remove this because uh, this will be the next step to, to, to dial in. So as soon as you do that, throw that up there and you get this image. That's the next step. Okay, we get this fat finger that's been extended out. <laughs> so you can see if you turn that off, all those edge pixels, right? Now we have another issue that you have to deal in and dial in. It's not an issue, you just got to dial it in. And that is basically let's cut this out so that it matches the size of the original thumb. So we're going to cut that out to match the size of the original thumb. And you can do that by taking the original shape. And you can see our original shape here because we used this border width we sucked in. We need to push it back out to the original size. <laughs> So I'm going to do that with an erode dilate and then a blur to do a little finesse at the end. So let me turn blur off real quick and I'm going to pipe this into the mask effect of the merge. Okay. So now we've got that over here. The left side is still looking at our original roto. So you can see how much we had sucked in on it. So um, how far do we extend out? So do these one at a time. Start with erode dilate. Over here on the right, you can see just the the mat, the, uh, the alpha mat. That's basically what we're working on when we're going out of here. And the other thing to note is when you go out of a mask, make sure you're going on to the input of a road dilate and input of blur. It's going to want to go to mask if you're not paying attention. Um, but we want that to be the input, not the mask of that. So over here on merge, um, we're going to look at that on the right side and the left side to compare to our original, loading that up over here. Oh, the other thing is if you don't know how to load buffers, um, it's the, the the period key and the comma key and the slash key, the ones right next to shift down there. And that just lets you see, you know, different different buffers, different viewers. So right now I've got the B, the A, and then if you hit the slash right next to it, it lets you see both. And you can use this guy to wipe between them. Um, if it's way off screen and you don't know where the thing is, you hold command and option to just anywhere you select with your mouse, that's where it moves that little splitting divider line. That's a super, super useful thing to know. Anyways, uh, we want to match these things up. So I've got the erode dilate. By default, that's where it came in at. I need to push those pixels back out. So I'm pushing them back out like this. Okay. If you hold command while you change these parameters, uh, you can do it in a little bit finer increments. I'm going to zoom in real tight, get this thing as, as accurate as I can. And then the next thing we'll polish it off with a blur, Command P to turn that node on. And the other thing you can do is turn off checkered underlay to kind of see things a little bit better over here, okay? So try to get about the same amount of blur. That's maybe going over a little bit too far, so I'll pull in on that dilate. And then we have pretty much a pretty good match. Now you can see the one thing, if I move in real close, Especially if I look at just like the, the blue channel, you can see we have noise on this. This is our original on the left, but we don't have any noise on this. So what you can do is this advanced edge extend going back to earlier. It has this noise feature. Just pop that sucker on and you should be pretty good to go. So there's a monochromatic version and a color version. The monochromatic is a little bit more filmic. Maybe it looks a little nicer. And you can also, there's a lot of other parameters you can change here. But if I turn this back to C for color, C for color, we're pretty much done with it. So um, the other thing, it looks black right now, but that's just because I turned off the checker underlay. But we actually have an alpha channel coming out of this merge. Now you can just merge this finger over any background, and it should be fine. So 
this is my background, which let's say this was a screen insert on top. You take your finger, right, which is this layer here, put that on top, and now you actually have a finger that, that uh, works on top of anything. You could use motion blur um, and, and sort of feather the edges, but the point is, is we got rid of the bad color that was on that edge. So this has tons of uses, um, and I can't wait to, to use it to really, really dial things in. And uh, yeah, that's it. So hopefully that helps explain advanced edge extend. Um, again, you want to use it in extension only is the key thing. And we're basically splitting the edge extension and the core mat, and then we're going to combine those back together. And we're going to mask off the final composite with using an erode dilate and blur to, to taste.